Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD EXB 132AR-K HDMI extender kit. This product makes it very simple for you to extend any 4K ultra high definition media source up to 230 feet or 70 meters away in your own home over a single Cat 5E or Cat 6 cable. The product also employs the very latest in HD based T technology, which means both the audio and video stream will be sent across that cable in pure uncompressed format to give you the best possible picture and audio at that secondary location. Also included are a set of IR blasters for the transmitter and receiver that allow you to send those infrared remote control signals from that secondary location all the way back to your primary location so you can actually control the media you're watching. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you everything that's included with the kit. Then I'll explain some of the audio and video standards the product supports. I'll take a closer look at the components and explain what they do. And then finally, I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how simple it'll be to use it once you get it home. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open the box, you'll find a transmitter module and a receiver module and a set of infrared blasters for both the transmitter and receiver that allow you to send those infrared signals back to the primary location. We also include sticky tape so you can attach those to your components. Also included are a set of brackets that allow you to mount the transmitter and receiver up off the ground on a wall or underneath the desk for easy access. We also include a single power supply because the unit features a power over cable function that allows you to plug it in at both the transmitter or the receiver, either one, and it'll actually send that power across that same cable all the audio and video signals are being sent. So you need one power supply to power up both of the modules. And then finally, we include an instruction manual that gives you all the information you need to understand exactly how to use the product. There's contact information in here in case you have questions and extensive diagrams to show you how to connect the device with your own equipment. Now, if you stay tuned, I'll explain some of the audio and video standards first, and then I'll come back and we'll take a closer look at the components. The product provides the widest support possible for modern video and audio standards, including uncompressed HDMI audio and video with video resolutions up to 4K at 60 Hertz. Its audio support includes PCM, two channel, 5.1 channel, and 7.1 channel, in addition to Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Digital EX, Dolby True HD, DTS, DTS EX, DTS 96 slash 24, DTS High Res, and DTS HD Master Audio. The media products support it include game consoles, DVD players, cable TV boxes, streaming devices like Roku and Apple TV, and home surveillance systems. Included with the kit is a sender module, a receiver module, two brackets to make it easy to mount these modules to the bottom of a desk or a nearby wall. There are also two sets of infrared blasters, and you'll notice they're a little bit different. One has a larger connection on the end of it there. This one has a smaller connection. The larger connection is the receiver, and it plugs into the infrared in. The smaller one is the transmitter, and it plugs into the infrared out. And there's a set for both the sending module and the receiving module, as well as sticky pads to attach these to your equipment. There's also two RS-232 connectors that allow you to make a very quick connection to the RS-232 connections on the back of both modules, and you can send those RS-232 signals over the same LAN cable between them. There's a power supply included. This end gets plugged into the wall. The, this end has a barrel connection that can plug into the back of either the receiver or the transmitter. You only need one power supply to power the entire system. And then finally, a full instruction manual that lists all the specifications for the product, as well as connection diagrams and how these connections are made with your own equipment. Now I'll take a look at both modules and I'll start with the sender module, but both of these units feature a full metal enclosure to help reduce outside interference from causing issues with the sensitive electronics inside. On the front of the sender unit, you'll notice three LEDs on the left-hand side. The first one's a power indicator. That lets you know you've got valid power connected to the unit and everything's working. To the right of that's the ARC indicator. If you're using the ARC function and you've made your connections, that'll light up. To the right of that's the SP diff indicator. If you're using that style of audio and you've made a connection between the sender module and your home stereo system, that'll light up. To the right of that's a switch. Now the sender unit has the ability to do local audio extraction, which basically separates the audio and video streams at this location, and it allows you to take that audio stream and pass that along to a home stereo system for better audio quality. That switch allows you to select between analog output or SP diff output, and I'll show you those connections in a minute. To the right of that is a micro USB service port. That gets connected up to your home computer to push microcode changes to it if needed later on. On the bottom of the unit, 
venting holes to keep the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature. On both ends, there are holes here where you can mount the brackets that are included with the kit, so you can mount this to the bottom of a desk or a nearby wall. On the back of the unit, power connection over here, that gets connected to the power supply that's included with the kit. Barrel connections get plugged in, you tighten the collar and that's all the power you'll need. To the left of that is the LAN connection, again a CAT5e, CAT6 between the sender module and the receiver module. To the left of that is the HDMI input port. That's connected to whatever media source you want to share with that secondary location. To the left of that, there are two 3.5 millimeter ports. Those are used for the IR blasters, infrared in, infrared out. The infrared in gets connected to the receiver on the IR blaster kit. IR out gets connected to the transmitter. To the left of that are two audio connections. That switch on the front will allow you to select between analog left and right out or SP diff out. And then finally, the RS-232 connections in case you want to transmit those across to the receiver unit as well. On the receiver, similar indicators on the front. Power indication, ARC, SP diff. Again, the switch where you can switch between the audio. And then the service port on the right-hand side. Ventilation on the bottom, mounting bracket holes, plenty of ventilation on the sides as well. On the back of the unit, power connection, and again, you only need to connect up power to one of these two modules. It has power over connection, so once you connect it up here, it'll actually send the power over that LAN connection to power up the other module. So you can choose where you want to plug it in. To the left of that is your LAN connection. The left of that is HDMI output. That gets connected to whatever monitor you want to use at that secondary location. Two infrared blaster connections, again, IR in, IR out. This is SP diff out at the secondary location. And then finally, the RS-232 connection. Now I'll show you in a minute, if you stay tuned, how to make those connections so you can get this working with your equipment at home. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to get this product working with your own equipment at home. For this demonstration, on this side of the table, I'm simulating the primary location in your home. It's where you're enjoying your media content today that you'd like to share with that secondary location. And I've got a monitor set up with a small media player that's looping a video that I can use for this demonstration. On this side of the table, I'm simulating that secondary location. It's wherever you want to enjoy the media content from that primary location. Could be an upstairs bedroom, downstairs in the den. It has to be within 230 feet of that primary location. I've got the sender module here and the receiver module on this side. Now we'll start by connecting up the sender module. The first connection you'll make is your input source. So I'll disconnect that from the monitor. I've got an HDMI cable. I'll plug that into the HDMI input port on the back of the sender module. Now I'll move on to the receiver module. I've got a monitor set up with an HDMI cable connected to it, and that plugs into the HDMI output port on the back of the receiver module. The next connection I'll make is the network connection between them. Now, you can use a CAT5e or CAT6 cable for this. I've got 100 feet of CAT6 cable here. Make sure you use a good quality cable because it could impact the quality of the video that's being transmitted between them. I'll make a connection to the receiver on the LAN port and the same on the sender module. And now that I've made that connection, we can apply power. Now because it's an HD-based T technology, we're not only transmitting audio and video signals across that wire, we're also transmitting infrared signals back so I can control the media content as well as power across that cable so I can connect the power supply up on either end. Just for simplicity, I've got it plugged in on the floor and I'll connect it up to the sender module. Slide that plug in, tighten the collar. The minute I make that connection, you'll notice the power light comes on on both the sender and receiver module. What's happening right now is they're both going through a power on self test to verify the electronics are working properly. On the sender module, it's checking the input source, making adjustments for resolution before it sends that signal across the wire. On the receiver side, it's doing the same power on self test and it's checking the resolution of the monitor to make whatever adjustments are necessary to give you the best possible picture. And there you go, there's your video feed. Now, the only other connection you might want to make has to do with the infrared blasters. There's a set of these included with the kit for both the receiver and the sender module. And as I'd mentioned, there's two different styles. There's a larger head Head and a smaller head. The larger one is the receiver module, and that gets plugged into the infrared in. The smaller one is the transmitter module. It gets plugged into the infrared out. So you'll connect those up at the receiver side and another set at the sender side, and that'll allow you to transmit your infrared signals from your remote controller from that upstairs bedroom over that same wire back down to the receiver side to control the media that you're actually watching. And it really is just that simple. We hope you found this overview of the UHD EXB 132AR-K helpful. With a few simple connections, you can use this product to extend any 4K ultra high definition media source up to 230 feet away in your own home over a single cable. You can also use the infrared blaster kits to extend the infrared signals from that secondary location all the way back to the primary location over that same cable so you can actually control the media you're watching. Finally, 
because the product includes the newest HD based T technology, you're assured that your video and audio signals will be transmitted across that LAN cable to the secondary location in crystal clear clarity. Now, if you have any questions about anything we've covered today, please check the FAQ on our website or use the contact us link to send us a note and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks again for watching.